Father God, I just thank you for being here in the midst of us this morning, Father God. We thank you for the worship service that's gone up thus far. We ask that the ground is prime and ready. The Holy Spirit is here speaking in and through, Father God. I ask that you decrease all of me, Father God. My mind, my ideas, my thoughts, my ways, Lord, and replace them all with you, Father God. Let nothing in me hinder your word going forth to your people, Father God. May it resonate on open hearts, open ears, ears that hear, hearts that are listening and attentive to hear what you have to say to them, Father God. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. 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 Praise God this morning. Amen. I want to give honor to the woman he has placed over this house ministry, Pope Christian Church. Amen. Our own pastor, Reverend Gloria Williams. I thank God for her and the woman that she is. Amen. As Color Purple say, nothing but devil keep me from it, right? That's so right. nothing but devil keep her from these doors and this, and this here word of God. Amen. So we praise God and thank that he saw fit to have us as, as the leader of this house and to send us here to be able to be led by her, somebody who truly, truly seeks the truth and the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Not for her own gain or not for her own uh, ideas or opinions. Amen. So I thank God for that. Um, I want to give honor to all the rest of the leaders of the house. Um, I want to give honor to my husband, who God has placed over our house. Amen. I thank God for the man that he is in God. Amen. And I want to give thanks to my four favorite humans on this planet, my children. I thank God for them and who they are in my life and all the lessons I'm learning through them. Amen. So I, I just I give God praise, and I'm not going to delay it any further. The Lord, any further, we're going to go ahead and break into 1 Samuel chapter 11. Amen. I had to go back and look because I had this message prepared so long ago. And somehow I just couldn't bring it forth. We had so much stuff going on. But God has a tear. And I praise God for 1 Samuel chapter 11 because he gave me a whole bunch of lessons this week. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's how God will work. You know, you'll study something and then he gives you real life application. He'll show you through it the word as you live your daily life. You start to see, oh, that's what he meant by that. I had that part all wrong, you know, so just being able to look back, I thank God. So we're going ahead and break in, and, and for all those who are online, um, everyone here at Ministries of Hope knows we read out the King James Version unless we otherwise state. So uh, we're going First Samuel chapter 11, picking up at verse 1, and I'll read 1 through 3. Um, I'm not going to read it very much per se. As a matter of fact, I'll just click note it because I don't want to hinder what God has to say. But basically, the first thing is that, that now Saul, where we left off the last time I was reporting, Saul has now been crowned king. He's been told that he's been told king, he's been chosen by lot in front of the people. We know God did that, but Samuel had him, brought all the people there. This is when Saul was hiding, even though he was tall, he was trying to hide. Now he's there, so I'm jogging everybody's memories back. Now he's there, and he's getting to this point where Samuel now has showed him as a priest in front of everybody, this is who God has chosen. He's answering your prayers to be king, but Samuel also gave them a warning. He told them that now you got this king, even though God was your king, you didn't want him to be. So he's answering your prayer because now you want a man, so I'm giving you a man, Saul. Now, as we see here, we know latter chapters, if you follow us on Wednesday night Bible studies, um, we know latter chapters, Saul ain't do everything he was supposed to be doing, but this is one of the moments where he got some of it right, mm -hmm. I will say. So he started off good. We're still at the part where Saul started off good. Amen. So travel back with me <laughs> this morning. Amen. Because we know what Saul turned into. But we're going to pick up here because now while this is all going, they are still under the oppression of these Philistines, these Amorites. The Philistines the Amorites. They are still under their oppression. And um, through studies, I found out going back chapters and chapters, you got to search all over this Bible, so I'm not going to make you do it. But through this, there were 7,000 men who escaped. He had already gouged out the right eyes of some of the men of Israel around this area. There were 7,000 men who got eyes were not gouged out. They had ran to Jabesh. They ran to Jabesh Gilead to hide from him. Well, now we're getting up to 11 because now it goes back. As Pastor always say, the Bible don't go in sequential order sometimes. It doesn't go in same order. you got to kind of search through Right? So we're looking here. Now, Nahash, the Amorite king, came up and encamped at Jabesh Gilead. Because now he's like, there's a 7,000 men here. He basically has this camp surrounded. And he's like, hey, come out. Come out of here. And the people are so scared at this point. They're like, the men are so scared. They're like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? They're like, well, listen, uh, make a treaty with us. 
Now, can you imagine in today's terms, somebody got you surrounded, they ready to fight you. They're ready to take everything you got and you, you don't want them to take it. So you just like, let me have a little bit. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Let me rest on that. That's where they were. They were like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Let's make a tree. Well, he winds up answering them. He says to the elders of Israel, he winds up telling them in these verses, uh, keeping on um, in, in this chapter, he winds up telling them, listen, I'll make a tree with you only if I can gouge out your right eyes. Now, the reason why the right eye is very, one of your strong eyes, but not just that, him gouging it out, he wouldn't let people help them. It would be hard for them to do their daily work. It would be hard for them to rise up and fight. So if you can imagine, they're slaves. They're doing slaves. He wanted them to be enslaved to them. But not just enslaved. I want you to be a reproach. I want you to everyone to know, because we got to remember putting in context, as we studied before, everybody heard about these Israelites who God was on their side. So when we understand that it's not about us, it's about God. Yes. And this is this is what they're doing. He wanted not only just you to be in bondage, but I want to make it cruel. Cool. I want to take your right eyes out because I want people to laugh at you. I want you to be a laughing stock amongst the people. Like, look what I did. He's trying to stretch his hand, and I'm talking about the king of the Amorites. He's trying to stretch his hand to show it. But as we saw what God did with Pharaoh, that don't go. When God says it's going to go, what's going to happen is going to happen. Amen. So he already had Saul waiting in the wings. Amen. Yes. Amen. So the first thing that God had me going through, because I'm like, Lord, what is this showing? You know, they're in the middle of this confrontation. The first thing that he had me to give you to take away is that sometimes you got to get uncomfortable to grow. Sometimes good can only come from discomfort and confrontation. And confrontation meaning you're going and confronting some things. You're confronting the problem. See, the problem with us today is we don't like confrontation. We don't like to get into confrontation because confrontation has gotten a bad connotation. You're always, it, it's now, when I say confrontation, what puts in your head is war. What puts in your head is you arguing with someone, going back and forth with someone, arguing with enemy. But the Bible tells us we wrestle not with flesh and blood. That's and right. as we discussed right. this morning, and as I always say, our biggest battle is going to be within ourselves. Amen. 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 So now Amen. when you look at that, God is saying whatever comfortability you got, all that you got to get discomfort to follow me. Yes. As we study yes. this morning, looking at Jesus, where was he in the wilderness? He was in discomfort. Was yes. he not? That's right. He was not comfortable. But what he was resting in is his God. That's right. What he was resting in is the past. Yes. And the reason why they lost it and said, listen, let me give you, when he told them, listen, I want to take out your right eye. You know what Israel answered back? They didn't say God is before us who can be against us. They didn't quote that scripture. Right. They didn't quote that God is on our side. Right. Yeah. They didn't quote any of that. What they said to them was give us seven days. Uh -huh. Give us seven days to think about it. Yes. And God is telling us, trust me. Trust. Don't yes. trust yourself. Yes. Trust me. Don't yes. fear. I have not given you a spirit of fear. Yes. Trust me. Yes. You don't have to be fearful about anything because what does he tell us in his word? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's right. That's right. Who can be? Who can be? Right. So you're looking at that. They said seven days. Now the good part of that is that at least they had enough wisdom to say, let's think about it. That's right. At least they had enough wisdom to not say yes in a moment. Yes. And that's the other point God has. Do not say yes or no in the moment. He said, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Right. But that has to be a delayed yes sometimes and a delayed nay. Because if you're not sure about it, as we told you this morning, somebody's quote a scripture to you, you're not sure about it, I gotta go think on that. That's right. I gotta go research that. That's right. I gotta go look at that. I don't know. It right. sound right. Because right now, they wanted to not be in confrontation. That's right. But God is saying, you got to rebel against those who are not after his own heart. And sometimes you have got to be in confrontation. That's now, right. if confrontation comes for us, it's with us. Yes. It's with ourselves. No, I know this isn't good for me. That's right. I know I want to do this, but I know where it's going to lead me. Right. So do I have enough in me to turn away? No, I don't. That's right. But who does? Greater right. is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. And he says to us, I have overcome the world. Don't yes. be fair. I have overcame it. Yes. So if you're already a conqueror, if you're already victorious through God, mm -hmm. then why are we sitting here as Christians like we don't have the power or the answer? Oh, yes, say so. They had the answer to their problem, but they didn't want to follow that answer. Right. They wanted to go another way. Yes. They're looking at the battle. They're looking at the people. They're looking at this surrounded. 
I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm looking at all the world. I'm looking at the craziness. I'm looking at everybody doing everything. They twerking. They cursing. They doing all they want to do. Should I follow? Because it's easy to do that. Yeah. It's easy to conform to the world. Yeah. But it's hard to love yourself and love your God in a society that wants and profits off of you being insecure. Who profits off of your ignorance. Amen. And God says, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a judge. So does he mean you'd be ignorant? No. 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 Because he told us in his word that I am the master, and the master doesn't let his servants know what he's doing. But he said, I told you all these things. Uh -huh. That's right. He ain't keeping no secrets from us. He's giving us all the cards straight up. Uh -huh. We playing spades with everybody saying, you ready to see them all. That's the way God does. That's right. But the question is, will you trust him? Yes, God. Ah, mm, as Pastor quoted this morning, as she quoted Jeremiah, where he talks about in his word, he says, call on me and I will answer. Yes, mm -hmm. But are you calling him? Mm. Because it takes trust to call. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm not even going to pick up the phone if I don't trust that you're going to be there in my time of need. That's I'm right. not picking up the phone if I don't trust you. But see, the trust is not built in the time of need. That's where the confusion comes. That's right. Yes. That's right. As we talked about this morning, the trust is built over time yeah. of you standing on God every yeah. day and yeah. all things yeah. giving thanks and yeah. all things being grateful yeah. and all the things we're going through. Yeah. And instead of them changing their focus on God and who they serve, they said, we, if we don't find a man, and that's in the verse right here, he said, if we don't find a man to answer us, we'll come back to you. That's right. Give us seven days to find somebody. You're looking for man, but God is saying, here I am. Yeah. Send me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm the creator. I spoke to nothing and made everything. That's right. Why are we looking at flesh? Mm -hmm. What's that scripture, Reverend? Reverend um, touching quote all the time. The arms of man will fail you. Every time. That's right. That's right. Every time. That's right. Amen. Whew. Lord, I'm down. We got to get okay. That's so right. now, they don't thought on this thing. And then we get to verse 4 and 6. Because then God told them to give you what you need. Saul. Now we're going to go ahead and read this part. We're, we're in verse 4 of chapter 11 of 1 Samuel. And it reads, Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul. So now they left them, the king of the Amorites, and they went to Saul. And they told him tidings in the ear of the people. And all the people lifted their voices and wept. Tell me they had hope. Because mm -mm. their hope was not in the Lord. No. But if your hope is in man, any bad news you hear, you're going to be sad. That's right. As we talked about, you can't let the world, because he says we're in this world but not of it. That means that as much as you watch the news, your hope is not laid in the news. That's right. That means Thanks as much so. as you hear everybody else, your hope is not laid in that. That's right. Yes, we see everything going. But then you start getting to praying, Lord, cover us like you did in Israelite while you were putting faith right. on Egypt. Thanks so. You had it sitting in Gosha, chilling. And plagues were raining down. Yes. That's when we start praying, Lord, keep us in Goshen. Right. Keep it, let this Woo! let this not be in Goshen. Yes. Let, us, let the rain not come now as well. Right. Ten thousand falling on our right, but it ain't coming out of us. And if it's meant to touch us, you help us go through it. Yes. Ain't that what Minister said? Sometimes we gotta change our prayer. All then right. we said about. Sometimes you gotta change your prayer. You say, Lord, give me the strength to go through it. But that's when the strength is coming, you gotta stand on the word. You gotta prepare the strength. You say, He's our strength. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But what does it mean? Through Christ. Not on our own. It ain't in and of our own. Woo, God, thank you, Jesus. Because if you go ahead and you read here, let me go there, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Because First Corinthians chapter 15, 57, 57 says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. yes. Victory in us. Uh -huh. But then, God is still good. What does he call us? He go back in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. He says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. All right. That's right. So you got the God of the universe, the creator of all things, oh. saying, I love you and I'm ready to fight for you. Uh. Trust me. Yes, Lord. Just trust me. What is what is Pastor Quote off? Let go and let God. Yes. The battle is not ours. That's right. Let go and let God. That's what's everything in your life. Yes. You being bullied in school, let go and let God. Yes. That's right. You being talked about at work, let go.
go in like that. You being backdoored at work, let go in like that. You being challenged on the let go in like that. I'm trying to work out. You working out and stuff keep happening. You keep getting sick because Satan don't want you to stay committed to the vision. Let go in like that. Let go in like that. That's where discipline comes in. That's what he said. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. And in another version, it says that sound mind is self-discipline. Because it takes discipline to study. Amen. It takes discipline to reach into these oh, scriptures yes. oh, yes. when everything is good. Because oh, yes. see, when everything is good, when your marriage is good, you ain't going to marriage counseling. No. We're reactive people. We're not proactive. And God is looking for proactive people. That means you getting to work before the storm comes. The Bible tells us, help us to number our days so that we can move with wisdom. So I don't wait for the rain to come. I'm, I'm like Noah out there preparing the ship. Because he's numbering the days before it comes. I don't wait until my car breaks down. I put a little bit every paycheck you get. To prepare. Yeah. Because what does God guarantee us and what does Pastor remind us all? She keeps us humble with that one. That scripture. It don't matter what we go through, we are all going to be touched on this earth. Mm-hmm. We are going to go through something. It is guaranteed. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, that's why God tells us thinking, not robbery when we go God, fall into God's temptation. Yeah. No one that is perfecting our faith. Yeah. Yes. Right? So what does that mean? We getting tried by God. See, the world has us thinking, oh, don't try me today, girl. Don't try me today. But God's saying, I got to try you to prove you. That's right. Because I got to prove what's in you to you because I need to show you what I need you to do. That's right. And Israel has forgotten who they are. So now they search it. And they get to Saul. And everybody weeps. Saul's now in the field. He comes back. You know, he's working with the oxen. He comes back and he's like, why everybody crying up in here? What's going on? Can you imagine the whole town? That's what it said in verse 4. It said all the people lifted up their voices and wept. Not some, all were crying. All were crying. Here we go to verse 5. It says, and behold, Saul came after the herd of the field. And Saul said, what aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the man of Jabesh. So now they told him. But see, sometimes you can tell people the bad news, girl. We only got two dollars and three fish. We only got three fish and five loaves of bread. What are we about to do? We only got two fish and five loaves of bread. What are we about to do? We only got three nickels. We ain't got two pennies. Well, uh, hello, have we heard of the widow's mic? Put it in there and let God work with you. That's right. That's you right. ain't got to see what we're changing right. around. Get a prayer and let's see what happens. Yes, God. Right? So they expected Saul probably to do the same thing. See, but this was the first thing that God knew he needed because he was preparing Saul even in his ignorance to be king. Uh-huh. Because we know Saul, as we discuss further in studies, if you join us, you're missing out if you're not. And then we know that Saul did not have a personal relationship with the Lord. Right. So God, he was just being used until David was ready. That's the way I look at it. That's right. He was just being used until David was ready. So God had this boy growing up. So therefore, he can be, and how sad it is, because we know from Ephesians, how sad that it is to just be used by God temporarily. Ah, as we played the song today, as they played the song today, how good it is to know the Lord. Yeah. That don't mean knowing when trials come. come, on, come you on. got to know them before they come. Yeah. So that you can be strengthened. Yes. Because that's how he strengthens you, through his word. Yes. Through his testimony, through yes. your testimony, he builds your faith. That's right. So we're looking at the Bible says from glory, glory is taking us. So every battle you go through is supposed to be promoting you higher. Yeah. Spirit realm, as we were talking, that spirit realm is supposed yeah. to be promoting you. Every time you're looking in these scriptures, you're doing workouts. Yes. You're doing workouts. Ah, trust in the Lord with all that heart. Lean yes. out to thy own understanding. Yes. All that way you know it's going to go direct our path. That's a push up. Yes. 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 That's a spiritual push up. Because what did he tell us? Our weapons are not carnal. That means they are not tangible. They are not guns. They are not knives. They are not bombs. They are not none of that. He said our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty in God through God for the pulling down of strongholds. That's right. See, you can be in the wilderness, but in your mind. Yes. So therefore, when we look here, right here, then let me tell you what Saul came back and said. See, this is when he did right. And everything he did right, we're supposed to say yay. And everything he did wrong, we're supposed to say nay and move the other way, right? So verse 6, he said, And the Spirit of God 
I came upon Saul, when he heard these titans, so see, Saul probably would have been crying with the people too if it wasn't for the Spirit of God. Uh -huh. Amen. That's why we got to do the spiritual yeah. push ups. Yeah. Yeah. Because trials are going to come, but you got to already be prepared and know what it is. That's right. Hey, turn these stones into bread. Uh, No, sir. Men shall not live by bread alone. There you go. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. You got to know it before it comes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So that you can regurgitate. That's what we say when we pray. You pray and you're just holding God to his word, calling it back to him. You put it back on him. Lord, you got it? I I can't. Especially all the time. I can't do it. There's nothing wrong with seeing that comes with humility. To say I can't. Because the world's trying to find answers. We don't know the answer to this question, but we're going to get in the lab and try and figure everything out. It doesn't matter if a couple of hundred thousand die. That's just par for the course. If we can save a million, but God says, I don't want none to perish. That's right. All right. All right. So when you're looking at this in verse 6, if it wasn't for the Spirit of God coming on Saul, now see here, when the Spirit of God came upon Saul, when he heard these, those things, and his anger was kindled greatly. Mm -hmm. See, it's not bad to be angry. That's The Bible didn't call it bad. It said, be angry, but say not. That means that when we get angry, we got to take our anger to God. And yes. see, the spirit fell on Saul and made him become angry. Why? Because there's an anger that leads to change. That's right. There is an anger that makes you do something. Everybody was looking at this man during lockup get killed while someone is kneeling on his neck. What happened? Everybody got angry. And they took to the streets. It leads you to do something. God's saying, don't sit in the anger, give it to me, and we're going to move in the way it needs to be moved. Amen. But that takes trust. Yes, yes. So now he's getting angry. Saul gets angry. And what did he do? He did like that one dude who was the um, priest who had his own whole, well, I want to say whore, but I'm trying not to say that, but I said it already. So he had his whore who was there. Remember, guys, when we were studying, and he cut her, cut her up in all these pieces and sent it to everybody and had everybody. Well, this is what Saul just did. He cut up an oxen, though, and he sent out this oxen to every corner of the of the tribe, all the 12 tribes of Israel, as we know. He sent it all to the tribe and said, tell everybody they better come here. And if they don't come, we coming after them after this is done. This is what Saul is telling him, right? So he said, he took a yoke, that's in verse 7. He took a yoke and oxen, hewed it, them into pieces. That means he cut it into pieces, sent it throughout the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, whoever cometh not forth after Saul, meaning if you don't come help us fight this battle, brethren, and after Samuel, so Saul, so shall it be so done unto his oxen. Meaning, I'm about to take all your monies. Because we know that was tangible for them. That, that was their livelihood style. You ain't going to be able to eat either. That's right. Because if they can feed us, you ain't eating. Right. What did we just talk about this morning? Bear each other's burden. That's right. So when it showed up, it showed up. When it's done, he had like, I think uh, another version in the commentary said 300,000 men that showed up now ready to fight. Mm -hmm. All right? That's the next thing God gives us. God ensures us victory, but through him, mm -hmm. as we talked about. But then the next thing, he will send you help. Mm -hmm. He's not going to leave you out there by yourself. Amen. And see, the help may come in a person. The help may come in an item. The help may come, but either way, it's being sent by God. He may not send you anybody. You may be praying, Lord, give me somebody to run this race with. And God is saying, I'm all you got. That's right. That's all you got. I don't need nobody here right now. Let's run together until I see fit for it. Which means he gives you the strength. That goes back to Philippians. I can do all things for Christ who strengthens me. He's all you need. Amen. That's it. Rest in him. Yes. But we don't want to rest in him because we don't want to go against our own wills as we talk Amen. this morning. And that's why it takes strength to say, not thy, my will, but thy will be done. Yes. And not just in my life. Because a lot of us like to take the Bible and hit the people over the head with it. Uh -huh. You know? As we reading this now, probably people at home listening online, hitting their husband like, listen, remember, listen. No, this is for you. Amen. This is right. for you too. That's right. Amen. 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 
I remember growing up sitting in church, I used to hate it. You know, me and my siblings, sometimes we get to a disagreement, you know. Maybe say, mm-hmm. As soon as the pastor says, mm-hmm. I did it this morning and I had to correct myself because we were talking about the cell phones and I was looking, we were talking about the cell phones and I was looking at my son like, mm-hmm. We do that, but understanding that he's ministering to you too. Amen. Because then pastor hit with, well, when you drive it. When you driving on the road, I was like, oh, Lord, running the red lights because my kids know. And he looked right back at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, because we like to turn it out to other people and see what their wrong is, but we never want to look at ourselves. Amen. And that's this whole situation. And praise God, this whole situation, you had to look at yourself. You look at Israel. They had the king of kings, the Lord of lords. They had it all and didn't know it. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? That's what I'm leaving you with today. We didn't even get into half of this, but we got time. That's all right. The way it goes is God wants, he wants, as the brother preached, he doesn't need you, but he wants you. And not the fact that he wants you also. As he said, he wants you. Yes, God wants you. And I'm asking you, do you trust him enough to be used by him? That's the question. You can tell they did not trust him. Call me and I'll answer and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not because I know. Yes, that's right. He wants you. Are you going to trust him enough to be used? It takes trust. As they say, cards up all trust. It takes trust. Open heart. So today, that's what I leave you with. That's that question that I want to leave you with. Is if you trust God enough to let him use you. If you trust him enough to believe that his plan is greater than the plan that you have for yourself. Do you trust him enough? And trust is not just when things are good. It's when they're bad. When they're ugly. The indifference, when you can't make out the way, can you trust him to say, I'm just going to keep on rocking with you, Lord, until you show me what needs to be shown. I'm going to keep putting in work. I'm going to keep working on this vineyard until witnessing, until you exalt me in due time. Until you raise up your body. But that takes trust. That's what God is asking this morning. And if you can't answer that question, I ask you to ask for prayer. I ask you to pray on it. Amen. I'm going to offer these three appeals this morning. Offer these three appeals. If you believe in the Lord, amen, and and you're like, I haven't trusted him. I turned away from him. I kind of did my own thing. I believe him, but I kind of did my own thing. The old people, old folks, you know, back in my day used to call it backslide. That's a nice way of putting it. You turn your back on the Lord. And now you're like, I want to come back. Inbox us. Message us. We'll pray with you. Ministries of Hope Christian Church, we will pray with you. There's leaders right now waiting and standing. Message us now. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That'll end um, our broadcast. Amen. As I continue on with church, thank you so much. God bless you. I hope something said or here and done will cause God to move in your life in a mighty way. Amen. Amen. Praise God. For those of us in the house, you know, if we don't take